a chapter, that's the first chapter is uh, black rednecks and white liberals. The second chapter is are Jews generic? Mm -hmm. Why the jump to from black rednecks and white liberals to are Jews generic? What's the point? Well, this, this book is really about ethnic and cultural issues in general. So there's a chapter on the Jews, there's a chapter on the Germans, and then there's a chapter on history in general. So that that's uh, they're, they're lumped together because they're all cultural ethnic issues. Fascinating story because among the, 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 the middleman minorities, of which the Jews are the most prominent, uh, the hostility to these people in countries around the world is out of all proportion to that, to any other kind of group I can think of. Uh, in terms of the violence, uh, the, the number of uh, of uh, black, the number of Chinese killed, let's say, in one year, uh, and by mob action, exceeds all the blacks lynched in the entire history of the United States. And the number of Armenians killed in uh, in Turkey you know, during the First World War is greater than that. And of course, the number of Jews slaughtered on a number of occasions in history, even before the Holocaust, is greater than that. So that the question is, why this particular kind of people? are the targets of so much uh, us venomous hatred. And I think the answer is that um, they, not, they not only succeed, they succeed in a way which is the threat to the egos of other people. But the guy who c comes here, let's say from Vietnam or Korea and arrives here with little more than the clothes in his back and a few word broken, words of broken English, uh, and a decade later he has his own little business and you see his son a few years after that getting ready to go off to Harvard or MIT, you got to ask yourself. You either got to, you know, you you you've got to hate yourself for saying, "My God, I've I've been stagnating. This guy was nothing, and now he's risen up." Or you're going to have to hate him. Uh, years ago, one uh, official of one of the Jewish organizations in New York asked me, "Well, what can Jews themselves do uh, in order to minimize the hostility they face?" I gave him a one-word answer: fail. Because and fail is not an option. Failure is only an option for those who see themselves as a victim of others and of circumstance. But if you believe in God, truly believe in the goodness of God, then you know that whatever circumstance comes your way, as painful and as difficult it might be, the only thing is, is to succeed. There's a beautiful story with the Lubavitcher Rebbe after the Yom Kippur War in 1973 with a great rabbi coming to him from Israel. And the Rebbe asked Rabbi Lau, what is the sentiment of the people on the street? And he said, people are concerned. What's going to be? This was too close of a call. The Rebbe got very serious and he said, a Jew doesn't ask what's going to be. A Jew asks, what should I do? My thought on those words of the Rebbe is, if God that you believe in is all good, it may be a very painful circumstance you're going through, but the only question is, what do I do about this? If there is no God, then you're a victim of your circumstance and you just point a finger at others and you don't move forward in your own life. And then you fail. But for us, failure cannot be, and the truth is anybody who takes this point of view and this belief, they won't fail. Because God is good. Now, the only question is, what good do I need to do in this circumstance in order that I should change the world for good?